Greetings, good morning friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis and eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing system a miracle, it really is no miracle at all. It is simply the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to get off your medication, help a loved one get off their meds, and get on a good nutritional supplement program. We're here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day. 844-236-6010. We're going to be talking to Dr. James Ehrlich about bioflavonoids, vitamin P, as they're called, bergamot bioflavonoids. Some of you have been using my Bergamax product, uh, brightsidehealthproducts.com, brightsidehealthproducts.com. We'll talk to Dr. Ehrlich about bioflavonoids, vitamin P, and, uh, and the skin. We've been talking about skin care here on uh, Skin Health on the Bright Side now for a few months. We'll continue talking skin health and we'll talk bioflavonoids with Dr. Ehrlich at the bottom of the hour. So we'll take your calls here in our next segment, in our second segment, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about prescription drugs or the longevity products or formulations or if you just have a comment or a success story. We love success stories. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, please head over to brightsideben.com. Check out all the products. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website, brightsideben.com, or my blog, pharmacistben.com. Thank you to Robert Lundgren, who set that up, and also criticalhealthnews.com. Thank you to John T. Collier, who set that one up. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866 735 2470. 866 735 2470. Our number, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in our next segment. We want to continue talking about our theme of exercising the skin, ex arc. Exercise comes from the Greek term, or the Latin, ex arc, to remove stability, to destabilize. Exercise is destability, and there's lots of ways to do it. Basically, when you're lifting weights, you're doing resistance training, or if you're exercising your brain by doing puzzles and uh, riddles and learning a new language, or you're exercising or any system, you're putting a stress on that system, and that system responds by growing. In the biological world, in the world of biology, this is one of the neatest phenomena, and it's really one of the best ways that we can access the body's health and wellness and healing systems is by putting a little bit of stress on it, but strategic stress. Nobody has a problem getting stress in their lives. We've got lots of stresses, but we don't have strategic stresses. By strategic, I mean a balance of stress and rest along with nutrition. This is really how you get healthy. You put a little bit of stress in the system, and a little bit is the key phrase here, a little bit of stress in the system, and then you give the system a lot of rest, a lot of chance for the system to recover and recuperate while it's being nutriated. And it's this balance, this cycle between stress and rest while, while the system is being fed or nutriated that accounts for growth. And it's true about any system that's alive. It's true about a cell. It's true about a, the body. It's true about various organs. And it's true about the skin. Yesterday, we talked about my favorite way, or one of my favorite ways, to exercise the skin, to destabilize the skin, to stress the skin. And that's by dropping the pH, by making the skin more acidic. The skin grows under acidic conditions. Psoriasis, eczema, acne, dry skin, these are associated with 
alkaline skin. Skin has to have a pH that's slightly acidic. This is kind of interesting, this whole notion of pH in the skin and, and pH in the body. Many of you have heard of the pH diet, the pH miracle. There's a guy named uh, Dr. Robert Young who's written several books on this. I've spoken to Dr. Young uh, several times about about his, his theories on pH. And while his, his point is well taken, it's a little bit simplistic in the sense that there's more to pH than just alkalinity and just alkalinizing the body. As it turns out, when it comes to pH, the skin needs to be acidic. A pH scale, for those of you who may not know, is a scale that measures how acid or non-acid a system is or, or something is. It has, to have, it has to be a water system. It has to be water for something to have a pH. pH requires H2O, water. So anytime a system has water in it, it's going to have a certain acidity or non-acidity. We say acid or base or acid or alkaline. On the pH scale, you've got 0 to 7 being acidic and 7 to 14 being non-acidic. So the pH scale goes from 0 to 14, 7 smack dab in the middle. Water is considered to be 7 and 0 to 7 is said to be acidic. 0 the most acidic, 7 the least, and then 7 to 14 is said to be non-acidic, non-acid or alkaline. 7 being neutral and 14 being very alkaline. Alkaline is a measurement of how slow something is or how negative its voltage, how much it's sucking up energy. Inside the body, you want the blood to be sucking up energy. That's why you want the blood to be slightly alkaline. However, on the skin, the skin is repelling things. The skin is protective. You want it pushing stuff away. So the skin needs to be acidic, and nature has mandated that the skin will have a slightly acid pH. The inside of the body is slightly alkaline, it's relaxed, it's sucking up electrical energy. The outside of the body is dynamic, it's moving, it's pushing things away. So the outside of the body, the skin should be 4.5 to 5.5. If the pH of the skin gets any higher, if it gets any less acid or more alkaline, that's when skin diseases show up. So dropping the pH, making the skin more acidic is a great health strategy. In fact, making the skin more acidic is the equivalent of exercise. If you're lifting weights, you know you can get strong when you lift weights. If you're doing your curls or your bench press or your squats or your military presses or whatever you're doing, you get strong by lifting weights. But if you want to be really strong, if you're training for a, 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 some kind of athletic performance event or you're a bodybuilder and you're training for a contest and you really want to be cut up and ripped and have well-developed muscles, you know that you don't just lift weights, you lift weights until you feel the burn. All athletes know about feeling the burn. All athletes recognize that when you feel the burn, you get a better workout. Well, what is that burn? The burn is acid. It's lactic acid. And it turns out that lactic acid, which is a type of alpha hydroxy acid, is a growth stimulant. Under conditions of lactic acidosis, that is high amounts of lactic acid or relatively high amounts of lactic acid, muscles grow better. Muscles grow more completely. So if you really want a good workout, feel the burn. Well, guess what? The same is true about the skin. If you can drop the pH of the skin and in essence on the skin, feel the burn, and you can use alpha hydroxy acids like lactic acid to do that, you're going to exercise the skin. You're going to get more skin cells. You're going to get stronger skin cells. And you're going to get more connective tissue fibers. You're going to get more collagen. You're going to get more moisture factors. You're going to get more of everything you like about the skin. That's how we have great skin. The standard way of treating our skin with rubbing a cream on the skin is the silliest thing we can do to our skin. Not only doesn't it work, not only are we spreading water and wax and oil and nothing the skin can use uh, on top of the, on the skin, but even worse, we're suppressing the skin. We're shutting down chemistry in the skin. Sealing the skin up with a moisturizing lotion is the greatest way to guarantee dry skin. Sealing the skin up with wax and with oil and with all of the standard ingredients that are in most skincare products is a great way to shut things down, to suppress growth, to suppress moisture factors, to suppress the production of connective tissue fibers. Alternatively, by dropping the pH, by using alpha, hydroxy, alpha hydroxy acids, and there's various ones, I'll tell you what these are in a second, by putting alpha hydroxy acids on the skin, you can turn things on. Lactic acid, malic acid, tartaric acid, these are all fancy names for alpha hydroxy acids. If you want to use products, if you want to make your own alpha hydroxy acid growth stimulants, there's lots of stuff you can get right in your kitchen cabinet to stimulate the growth of skin cells. I'll tell you a couple of those when we come back from our break and take your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All 
right, we are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Got Dr. James Ehrlich talking some flavonoids, bioflavonoids, vitamin P. We'll talk about vitamin P. If you've never heard of vitamin P, that's the fancy way of saying flavonoids. These are substances that are found throughout nature, fruits and vegetables, and they've got some really interesting health properties. You know, if flavonoids were discovered today, we probably would call them a vitamin, but we don't refer to them as vitamins. We don't even refer to them as essential nutrients, but the odds are pretty darn good that they are essential and they are vital. This is one of the reasons why you want to make sure that you're getting lots of produce, vegetables, 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 not so much fruits because of the high sugar content, but eating lots of veggies is a great way to get your flavonoids. We'll talk to Dr. Ehrlich in the bottom of the hour about flavonoids and skin health, particularly bergamot flavonoids. That'll be the bottom of the hour. And we'll take your calls here in this seg- in this segment, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. We're talking skin. We're talking skin exercise. Tomorrow I'll tell you about a vitamin that you can use topically. Some of you guys know what I'm going to talk about, a vitamin that you can use topically to exercise the skin. And when you use a vitamin to exercise the skin, not only do you get the benefits of the exercise, but you get the benefits of the vitamin too. So using... This particular vitamin to exfoliate or to stimulate or to exercise the skin is a great strategy because then you get the benefits of the vitamin too. You get the nutritional benefits as well as the exercise benefits. If you're interested in using some home kitchen type products to exercise the skin, red wine is a great stimulant, great exercise agent. Just put some red wine on a cotton pad and exfoliate with red wine. Red wine contains alpha hydroxy acids, particularly something called tartaric acid. Red wine is also a good source of antioxidants. It's a good source of resveratrol and other compounds, flavonoids that can help stimulate and improve skin health in addition to exfoliation. Apple cider vinegar is another great tool for exfoliating or exercising the skin. Alpha, um, apple cider vinegar contains the alpha hydroxy acid called acetic acid, which is actually a short chain fatty acid that we talked about for the digestive system, but also it's going to drop the pH on the skin. You also get minerals if you use apple cider vinegar, and if it's organic, of course, you'll avoid any preservatives or any toxicity. If you're interested, you can also use yogurt, by the way. Milk contains lactic acid. So using yogurt, a yogurt mask, or using just milk, buttermilk, will get you some butyric acid in addition to getting your alpha hydroxy acid, lactic acid. Of course, if you want to just go to the drugstore and get a, have a pharmacist make a toner for you, ask him for glycolic acid or lactic acid. Lactic acid is a little more moisturizing than uh, glycolic acid. In fact, lactic acid is the most moisturizing skin softening of the alpha hydroxy acids. You can ask a pharmacist to make an alpha hydroxy acid toner for you. You can buy glycolic acid or lactic acid off the internet and make your own toner. It just goes right into water. Look for, if you're going to have a pharmacist make it for you, if you're going to make it for yourself, get some pH paper and look for a pH of right around 3-ish or so, 3 to 4, somewhere in there. Remember, the skin's got a slightly acidic pH. It's slightly acidic. The skin pH is maybe, I don't know, 4.5, 5.5-ish. So if you really want to get the exercise benefits from your alpha hydroxy acid, you got to make sure that your solution is going to be around pH of uh, 3-ish or so, even even down to 2, anywhere between 2 to two to 3.5, and you need some pH paper to measure that. And you can buy pH paper at the drugstore also. By the way, lemon juice, lime juice, citrus juices, you can keep a, one of those frozen orange juice can- canisters in your freezer and scoop a little out and stir it in some water and then uh, get it to right wh- where you want the pH to be, anywhere from 3 to 4, anywhere from 2 to 3.5, in, in that range. It doesn't have to be exact, and you can't even tell what it is exactly on pH paper, but slightly acidic. You'll know it's slightly acidic because it'll feel tingly. Some people call it a burn. It's not a burn. It's a tingle. And that tingle is your assurance that you're getting that stimulating effect. Tingle will go away. And then after you use your alpha hydroxy acid toner, that's the, you have a golden opportunity. That's the perfect time to dose your skin. After the skin has been exfoliated, it's ready to be dosed with vitamins. So you tone your skin with alpha hydroxy acids. Tomorrow I'll tell you about a vitamin that you can use to tone the skin with. And then you put your vitamin C on the skin, you'll get deeper penetration of the vitamin C. None of this requires a dermatologist. None of this requires going anywhere outside of your kitchen. You can do all of this right from the comfort of your own home. Uh, Let's see, anything else I want to say? Oh, here's another thing. If you're buying an alpha hydroxy acid product, don't worry about the concentration as much as the pH. Skincare companies play all kinds of games 
and they'll tell you, oh, well, this is a 10% alpha hydroxy acid solution or a 5% or sometimes even skincare professionals will tell you to use a 10% or a 5% or 15%. That doesn't matter. The percentage doesn't really make a difference as much as the acid level. So don't be fooled by 10%, 5%, 15%, 20% concentrations. You want to know what is the pH of that alpha hydroxy acid level. You want to know what is the acidity of that alpha hydroxy acid product. You can have a 15% or a 20% that's weaker than a 1% or a 2%. You can have a 15% that's got a pH of 7, which is neutral, and you can have a 2% that's got a pH of 4, which is pretty acidic. The 2% in that case is going to be a much better product and a much more active product, and you're going to get much more benefits from that 2% than you are from that 15% or 20% because the pH is lower. So you want to know what the acid level is on your alpha hydroxy acid product. Get some pH paper, make your own, or if you're going to buy a product, use the pH paper to see what the pH level is on that product that you purchased. All right, tomorrow we'll talk about this vitamin, which you guys probably know what I'm talking about, and how it, uh, how it works as an exfoliating agent. And then we'll move on to talking about how this very important vitamin can help lighten your skin if you're hyperpigmenting, if you've got dark spots. And we'll talk about how this vitamin can shrink your pores or help reduce the appearance of pores. And also, we'll talk about how this vitamin can clear your skin up if you're breaking out. And we'll also talk about how this same vitamin that does all of these things is also the most important anti-aging topical vitamin you could ever use. We'll do all that tomorrow as we continue talking skin health on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Mitchell in Texas. Welcome to the bright side, Mitchell. What's up, buddy? Yes. Good morning, Ben. Yes. So I've been on BTK, Beyond OsteoFX, Glucogel, and um, Ultimate ESA for a couple years. Um, partly from having listened to your show um, and partly from um, uh, Rule of Law Radio here in Austin. Um, and I'm concerned because I've heard over the past couple weeks on um, some sort of alternative health shows about um, this vitamin K2 is what's being asserted as being needed to sort of counter the, the potential effect of calcium supplements hardening the arteries. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not understanding. You're saying vitamin, vitamin K2 is being touted as, an, as a way to antagonize calcium? Um, that it, it's needed in order to, to prevent the calcium uh -huh. from going into yes. the arteries as opposed to going into the bones. Okay, so specifically, they spoke about Mena Q7 vitamin K2, and it's kind of hard to find info on the internet about that. Yeah, it's a very confusing subject. Most, even nutritionists and certainly medical professionals, don't quite understand the importance of vitamin K2. A lot of them don't. So here's the deal vitamin K in general is a calcium magnet. It keeps, it attracts calcium. That's its main role. A lot of folks will tell you that calcium, vitamin K is a blood clotting vitamin, K for coagulation. Uh, and it is. It is involved in blood clotting. But its main role is to suck up calcium, is to attract calcium. So what you're alluding to is the fact that vitamin K can help keep calcium in the bones and keep it from leaching out into the blood. But it is a bit more complicated than that, Mitchell. Unfortunately, we're out of time. And we've got a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour. If you can call back tomorrow, that'd be awesome. I'd love to talk some vitamin K2. It's a very important vitamin very misunderstood. Uh, I apologize, Mitchell. Uh, that's all the time we have for this segment. Uh, if you call back tomorrow, that'd be great. We're coming up with Dr. James Early talking bioflavonoids right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific time and 10 to 11 Central time, five days a week and 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. You'll find a shopping cart with all the longevity products as well as Five years of archives at brightsideben.com. Lots of great information. If you miss a program or you want to review a program or if you want to send somebody over, we've got a search engine and you can search for various subjects that we've talked about at brightsideben.com. You can also go to benfuchsarchives.com. Okay, so we uh, periodically, once a month or so, we talk to Dr. James Ehrlich, an expert on bioflavonoids. And today we're going to talk to Dr. Ehrlich about skin health and bioflavonoids. Welcome to the Bright Side, Jim. Yes, thank you. Uh, hey, Dr. Ehrlich. 
Good to talk to you again. So uh, just by way of review, for folks who haven't heard you on the air, tell us a little bit about yourself real quick, and then tell us a little bit about flavonoids and what they are and how they work. And then I want to ask you some questions about how flavonoids can be helpful for the skin. So how would you get into working with nutrition? And tell us a little bit about your background as a, as a physician. Well, my, my background has been uh, initially in anesthesiology, but then over the last 20 years, I've gotten involved in all sorts of tests and technologies in the in the early detection of disease and in preventive medicine. And that sort of uh, got me involved with those people who are leading the fight against um, aging and uh, the use of various products uh, that can be beneficial in lowering cholesterol and blood pressure. And, um, and ultimately, a few years ago, we've talked about this, um, I got involved with a group of uh, scientists uh, in Italy. Uh, these are food scientists and cardiologists and endocrinologists who have been uh, looking at a particular citrus fruit called the bergamot fruit that's endemic to Calabria and um, noticed its great properties in antioxidants and anti-inflammatory and uh, this is really a bioflavonoid which um, is able to counteract uh, inflammation in the body and um, and free radicals and the stress that occurs. Uh, and then uh, about a year ago, we started studying uh, its effect in human skin, which, like all other organs, undergoes aging. But unlike um, other tissues, the skin is in direct contact with the environment. So it's a unique opportunity to look at aging as a consequence of environmental damage. Um, and as we all know, the, the primary environmental factor that causes human skin aging is ultraviolet, ultraviolet irradiation from the sun. So um, we started studying the properties um, uh, very rigorously in human skin cells of this sun-induced skin aging that we call photoaging. Uh, and it's a cumulative process that we believe can be ameliorated uh, by botanicals, uh, particularly this class of, um, of uh, phytonutrients uh, or uh, that we call nutrients. phytochemicals. Um, so these are botanical antioxidants and a strategy of blunting the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation uh, has been increasingly popular with uh, skin care products. And we were able to show the mechanisms in which uh, this bergamot a citrus product that you have um, available to your listeners, um, how this works in um, improving photoaging and, and now, blunting photoaging. Now, when you say uh, the sun, and you're right, the sun is one of the major causes of photo, photo damage and photoaging, but we grew up in the sun, no, Jim? I mean, we grew up in, in Africa. The bo human body evolved under conditions of a hot sun. So clearly, there must have been mechanisms in place for protecting the skin. We wouldn't have survived, right? The human race well, would have been extinct. There's so there's so would you say that that had to do the our natural protection that we developed that we don't have today, why we have so much more sun damage and, and cases of, of skin cancer, et cetera, has to do with not getting the flavonoids, not getting the nutrition that we, from an evolutionary perspective, have gotten? Yeah, I think they're very interesting points you, you bring up. Um, you know, the, the barrier, the natural barrier, the skin has its own antioxidant system that has evolved over the years and its own way of fighting environmental stress. Uh, the skin, however, was never designed to look at other toxins like smoking and some of the other pollutants that are out there that were not available you know, to, the, to our ancestors. Um, so uh, senescence or aging of the skin is the accumulation of, of all sorts of damages from the environment, not only ultraviolet radiation. Um, and, and the skin has, the skin system has developed its own antioxidant system, and that's what's always been available. It's just that under certain stresses, that becomes overwhelmed. So the... Um, the natural, a certain amount of reactive oxidative species are generated during normal cellular metabolism, and then overexposure to ultraviolet radiation plus some of these other environmental toxins 
can lead to a significant reduction in your own antioxidant supply accompanied by an increase of inflammation, what we call cytokines, leading to accelerated damage. So it's like a straw that breaks the camel's back kind of deal, like a load phenomenon? Yeah, that's right. Right. And the other thing that happens is you, you eventually get a reduction in your immune system, uh, and you get DNA damage, which is what we looked at, you know, telomerase activity, shortening of the telomeres, which you've probably discussed on, the, on your show. Um, so the viability and the longevity of skin cells uh, can be improved by slowing down the age-dependent shortening of these telomeres. Um, and potent antioxidants like this bergamot may allow the telomeres to actually suffer less lesions or less damage to their DNA. So, uh, and all related to oxidative stress and anti-inflammatory aspects. So we call this phytochemo prevention. You know, phyto well, let's phyto, say that again. Phyto, phyto, phyto chemo phyto, prevention. So phyto, phyto for phyto plant. Chemo prevention or phyto chemo prevention is done with botanicals. Um, where we're using these phytonutrients to blunt the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation and other stresses. And this has become very popular uh, with skin products. So would you say using, would you say using the flavonoids is, a, is an overall anti-aging strategy in addition to being a skin health strategy, using the flavonoids no, no orally? So, no so for the whole system, all the systems of the body? Yeah, all the aging systems can be blunted uh, by modulating uh, the immune responses, the inflammation, and the oxidative stress. And these are done very well by uh, flavonoids. Why do you suppose uh, flavonoids are not considered to be an essential nutrient? It sounds like they are. Well, it sounds yeah, like that's, a good, that's a good discussion. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. What, what are your thoughts about that? I, I think that maybe they didn't know they existed back in the days when they were discovering vitamins. Because flavonoids are active in such tiny concentrations, maybe they didn't have the detection mechanisms. They didn't have the devices right. to be able to find them. I mean, I'm guessing. That, that, that would be my right. hunch. Because they do well, sound like they're right. essential. Then, in the well, sense that you can't make them. Essential. Well, hang, I was going to say, you can't make them, correct? They, these bioflavonoids no, are not no. made in the body. No. You have to get them from the diet. All right, hang tight. I want to talk about specifically how you can use bergamot and how you can use flavonoids in a supplemental fashion in addition to a dietary fashion for anti-aging and, and uh, skin health benefits. And that includes, by the way, hyperpigmentation, darkening of the skin. Hang tight, Dr. Ehrlich. We'll be back after this. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Don't go away. Got more good health information coming up right after this break. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. If you're interested in purchasing the uh, Bergamot product, Bergamax, if you're interested in uh, upping your flavonoid levels and getting on some Bergamot, you can go over to Brightside Health Products and get Bergamax right off the website, brightsidehealthproducts.com. We're talking to Dr. James Ehrlich, who's a bioflavonoid and Bergamot expert. And we're talking about Bergamot and flavonoids for skin health. Uh, real quick, I want to get into some practical stuff about how to use the Bergamot, uh, Bergamax and the Bergamot for the skin. But tell us uh, what you know, Dr about uh, hyperpigmentation, dark spots, and how that relates to sun damage aging, and also how the flavonoids can help with that. And I know you're not a skin expert, but you're a flavonoid expert, and maybe you could tell us a little bit about how the flav about what pigmentation is, hyperpigmentation, and how the flavonoids work to protect the skin from the dark, darkening and dark well, spots. Well, you know, they all, they all work together. We're really talking about a very important issue beyond cosmetic. You know, we all know that that skin aging and skin cell death is associated with hyperpigmentation, with, with spot, aging spots, with loss of elasticity, with wrinkles. All these things are quite evident. So most of us can tell the difference in the skin of a 70-year-old versus a, a 5-year-old uh, just by looking at the skin characteristics and elasticity. But we're talking about something also very serious. The dark side of this is the all the aspects that are related to aging of the skin and making the skin less supple are also uh, leading, for some of us, to uh, uh, cancer, skin cancer. So the same processes of preserving uh, your antioxidant system and supporting that and decreasing inflammation and decreasing uh, effects on the telomeres, the DNA, and loss of skin viability 
uh, that, you know, turns into, for some of us, skin cancer. So it's valuable to consider anything that can support your immune system uh, of the skin and your oxidative system of the skin, not only for its appearance, but also to um, help prevent um, cancer. And Are so the fi- I think there's, there's really a very important aspect of this beyond the cosmetic area. Would you, would you go as far as to say that the flavonoids are anti-cancer for the skin, anti-skin cancer? Well, it appears that they are. It appears that they are. I'm not, I haven't rigorously studied, um, you know, uh, this area of what we call photocarcinogenesis and, and bioflavonoids. But, uh, makes sense, though. DNA damages are central uh, to photocarcinogenesis and skin cancer. Uh, the implication is that there's a value in this bioflavonoid-based type of treatment to support not only the skin uh, antioxidant system, uh, which would favorably modify the inflammatory expression um, to inhibit photoaging, but also its more most serious sequela, which is skin cancer. Um, so this is a area of intense research, uh, and um, so there are a lot of products now available um, that are trying to exploit the important properties of flavonoids um, in supporting the skin uh, antioxidant system. Would you say that somebody who's out in the sun, working in the sun, or who's fair, uh, fair complected and and more prone towards getting skin cancer would be smart to use use it prophylactically ahead of time, preventatively, flavonoids? No, no question. No question. I think they should be, you, you know, there are certain physical things you can do, like stay out of the sun and wear a hat. And then there are certain uh, biologic layers of protection, which I would say would be things like the SPF um, creams and that kind of thing. And then internally, from a biologic supportive point of view, um, supporting your own levels of antioxidants and anti-inflammatories, and that's where these bioflavonoids would fit in. How about uh, if somebody already has skin cancer or has a history of skin cancer? Well, I think um, it's probably true that beyond the conventional therapy for skin cancer, you've already proven that you are prone for this. So obviously basal cells and, and, and um, uh, squamous cell cancers and melanoma are all related to um, this depression of, of your own ability to counteract the inflammatory aspects and the, uh, and the deleterious aspects of ultraviolet radiation and other toxins. You've already proven that you have a tendency, so I think it's especially important to prevent future cancer. If somebody has a history. Uh, you know, in, in anybody like that. And that's why when you do show that you have a history of basal cell or other types of skin cancer, the recommendation is to be very, very careful about the sun and also to um, uh, support your system, especially with um, uh, skin care products. What's the relationship between vitamin C and bioflavonoids? Well, you know, I think, um, and we've discussed this before, I think there's some cofactors um, <clears throat> involved so that they support each other and that they're necessary for each other. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, there are many mar- uh, products, skincare products in the market that have vitamin C derivatives as an ingredient. Um, <clears throat> And like a, a scorable palmitate, and and it's the L-ascorbic acid. It seems to be the most useful form of vitamin C. So how they interact is not always clear, but um, certainly with age and sun exposure, collagen synthesis in the skin decreases, leading to wrinkles. And vitamin C is an antioxidant proven to stimulate the synthesis of collagen. And that helps minimize the fine lines and the scars and the wrinkles that we see in aging skin. Now, is, uh, is know, hyaluronic any... acid would be another uh, product that you know is sort of a fountain of youth and helps um, support and cushion and lubricate and support the connective tissues uh, as the vitamin C does also. So. Um, you know, all these forces of nature, as you age and as you get more cumulative exposure, 
seem to try to destroy your own hyaluronic acid, uh, certainly diet and smoking uh, can accelerate this. Um, so skincare products that contain uh, hyaluronic acid are, are frequently used to treat wrinkled skin. Is there an issue with absorbing, uh, getting flavonoids into the blood through the digestive system? Is that something that you have to pay attention to? Is it readily absorbed? Do you need to have a uh, uh, fat, digest fat digestion is involved? I know. Is there any issues with, uh, with malabsorption that affect how well, you're gonna, how well your body is going to be able to leverage or exploit the, the flavonoids? Well, I think that's probably true. Um, having said that, we've been able to show a very, very high level of bioflavonoids uh, with uh, both systemic absorption and what we're developing in the future, which is the a skin cream. It turns out that the, the bergamot uh, has two photoprotective um, uh, agents. One is called aringenin, the other one is hesperitin, which have been proven in other studies done by other research groups to permeate through the stratum cornea to deeper levels of the skin. So not only are we depending on the Bergamax uh, type of formulation to give you a high level of antioxidants in the blood level, but we can, will also eventually have skin creams that uh, can be applied topically and could be excellent candidates for protective agents against uh, skin photoaging and potentially uh, cutaneous uh, skin cancer, you know, and also because of, the, and if it's the anti-inflammatory effects, it's probably anti-acne or anti-psoriasis or anti-eczema or anti any other skin issue, right? Well, certainly psoriasis uh, and acne. Is, uh, obviously, as you know, acne has a very strong inflammatory basis to it. So I think those are all uh, logical um, conclusions. You think uh, using the uh, bergamot internally, taking flavonoids internally, can also have benefits for things like eczema, psoriasis, and acne? Well, that's what we hope. Uh, we haven't studied that. We've studied skin aging. We've studied various molecular biomarkers that have been proven to be associated with skin aging. One, of course, is the, uh, all the mechanisms having to do with um, oxidative stress, overwhelming the endogenous system. But also this an overexpression of inflammatory cytokines. Um, the There's the molecules of inflammation, the cytokines. Right. The molecules of inflammation. Yeah. That's all the time we have, Doc. Thank you so much. Okay. We'll have you back on next month. We'll talk more flavonoids. If you're interested in purchasing the Bergamot product, Bergamax, you can go to Brightside Health Products if you have diabetes or you're interested in protecting your skin from aging or the effects of the sun. If you're hyperpigmenting, if you have acne, eczema, psoriasis, any skin issues you want to think about using flavonoids in the Bergamax, Bergamot flavonoids are the most potent ones going. Thanks, Dr. Ehrlich. We'll talk to you again soon, buddy. Great I'm Pharmacist you. Ben. Thank you. Thanks, Doc. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. Check out my website, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com. If you're interested in purchasing any of your truth products, go to truthtreatments.com, and the Burger Max is available at brightsidehealthproducts.com. Tomorrow we'll continue talking skin health. We'll talk about a vitamin that you can use for exfoliation and anti-aging benefits as well. Thanks for listening, friends. Have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. 